Hi everyone, happy Monday. So I thought I would do something a little different and actually use some colored pencils. <laughs> I recently got the Castle Arts uh, gold colored pencils, the 120 set, and um, I had wanted to try them out and I didn't really want to call this a demo or color along because I'm only going to show bits and pieces of the video. I was going to show you guys how, how I colored the sky and the dirt, but um, I lost that video footage, so we got to start from here. I'm using the Cadmium Green. Hang on. Let me consult my list here because I didn't catch that. For the pepper leaves, I'm using Cadmium Green and Cadmium Green Pale. So I want to go ahead and let you guys know as I'm getting started here. So um, that's why I kind of called this the first look. This is my first try using these pencils. And um, I thought the Rita Berman books would be one of the best choices to really see if these pencils shine. Because these pencils are supposed to be more... Um, makeup's supposed to be more similar I guess to an oil based pencil like a polychromos so I um I remembered the one time I really used my polychromos was in a Rita Berman book and it turned out really pretty I think it was in the spring book and so I was like this will probably be the paper that these will do well on and um when I did the sky and the dirt, I was already pleasantly surprised by how these acted. Um, I used three color combinations on both. All my color combinations that I've used, with the exception of just a few little one-offs here and there that I've <laughs> forgotten now, are in the description. Um, so you'll be able to see what combinations I'm using. But... Um, one of the challenges for me is I have a lot of wrist, shoulder, back issues, tendonitis issues. Um, one of the reasons I don't use colored pencils very often is because I tend to use heavy pressure on the pencils. And if I'm really working hours and hours using heavy pressure on a page, um, that can really wreck <laughs> my arm <laughs> and my back. So... Um, that's one of the reasons you don't see me use pencils all that often. And I also, the tedium of filling in backgrounds, like really big areas with colored pencils, is one of those things I really don't particularly like doing. So what I did this time was um, I did want to make this a completely colored pencil picture. So I did use um, colored pencils for the background for the sky and the garden dirt and everything. Um, I just split it up into some different sessions. It took me about an hour, hour and a half, I think, to do the background part. Um, I actually went really light. And um, one of the things that I noticed right off the bat with these pencils is you get a lot of color even with lighter layers so you can kind of see here um, as time went on I even got to the point where instead of doing three or four layers worth of color I was only doing two and there towards the end when I was trying to get done with the picture and you don't really see me do that I'm using just like one or two layers tops and I'm still getting a lot of color so even when I use real light pressure, and I'm using fairly light pressure here on the initial layers of these leaves, I am getting some really nice color, even with just that lighter pressure. So um, immediately liked these pencils because of that. The background didn't seem so bad this time. And I think a lot of it, I mean, the pencils did great. Like I said, you didn't have to put a lot of pressure down to get a lot of color. Um, I just had to build it up on the background. And, and um, I think one of the things that really helped with this picture is that it is a smaller book and a smaller picture. Um, if you're not familiar with Rita Berman's books, they're not quite the height of a typical coloring book. They're probably about two thirds. The height so the fact that this was a smaller page also really worked in my favor I think <laughs> so
So, um, unfortunately, like I said, I don't have that footage to show you guys how that came about, but I do have the color combinations in the description. So, if you do like the colors that you see, at least, you know, I can give you what I used. And um, so, I was thinking I would like to do some color laws in the future, but I don't know if anybody would be interested in that. I know I typically don't do um, coloring in a color long format just because um, I speed up a lot and um, obviously a color long would go slow it would go real time and it'd probably be broken up over numerous videos if that is something you'd like to see me start incorporating I mean I'm not going to be doing a whole bunch of them but maybe like once a month or something we could do a series so I don't know and, ma and maybe there'll be the Rita Berman pictures like this because um spoiler alert as I'm doing a voice over here I uh really like these pencils in these books and definitely want to use them again so um but here I am and and the one thing I really like too is when I was coloring the rest of the picture I got to the point where I was just using two colors instead of three and and there's two reasons for that one um, I was getting some nice shading with just the two color combination. I don't, again, I am limited in how much time I can spend using colored pencils. Even if I, if I spread it out, this, this page would take weeks if I was just doing layers and layers. And first of all, it's hard on, I'm going to be hard on my arm regardless and B, I don't have the patience for that. I just, um... I sometimes I'll get to where I really want to work on a long-term project for like a month or something but I can tell you by about that third or fourth week I'm kind of ready to be done with it <laughs> so I don't have the patience for those types of um, layers and layers so um, these really felt good to me and they didn't they didn't crumble hardly at all. That was one of the crazy things. Um, you'll see me probably use my brush to dust occasionally. And that was really only when I started using just a little bit heavier pressure. Like when I was starting to get a little impatient. You know, once you, when I started with the background, that was, that was a good idea to start the background first. Because I was fresh on it. And I could take my time and build up on some layers. But as I got into the picture, um, my patience level was, <laughs> was fading. So I would at start increasing pressure a little more as, as time goes on through this picture. But um, even then, when I wasn't at putting hardly any pressure on the pencils, I was not generating any dust. Um, pencil dust and then even when I was putting pressure on them it was just slight dust it was just enough to make me want to brush the paper just to continuously keep the surface clean while I was trying to blend the pencils together but like I these are probably the least dusty pencils I have used in a while um, I can't remember what the polychromos were like because I think I used them either like it might have been two years I really need to start using my pencils more but these were I, I just yeah they weren't dusty at all which um, was really really nice um, less of a hassle because I didn't have to continuously be brushing the image after every single you know stroke of the pencil so but um you can see these leaves are coming along really nice very vibrant color on these I um I tend to like bright pops of color <laughs> and um these did really well I um yeah so I don't know what I'm doing I like I said this is more of a first peek at them and just kind of how I would how I guess what my experience was like with them um, so let me speed this up real quick. I don't want to make this video super long. So let me speed this up real quick. So, um, actually I'm going to just go ahead and cut it and we will pop over to starting the peppers next and I'll show you guys the completed, um, set of leaves and then we'll move on to the peppers. So let's do that. All right. So I'm assuming these are peppers. 
I'm assuming they are. I think I've still got a, uh, I've got one little piece over there of the green to fill in. So I'm assuming these are like, uh, jalapeno peppers or whatever. At least that's what they look like to me. So that's what we're going to color them as. And again, I picked two colors for this. I went with the scarlet, red, no, excuse me, magenta and red ochre. And, um, As I move across the page, you will see these a little bit more. I've got to figure out a better camera angle for when I'm doing close-ups like this. I just don't realize how much my hand covers up the picture itself. So, but as you can see, all the leaves are done. And, um, oh, I know what the problem was. I grabbed the wrong pencil. I, yeah, I thought I grabbed the magenta. Oh, these sharpen real nicely, by the way. I use a uh, dolly sharpener. It's not the one I think everybody uses. Mine's the 155. But um, it, it has the little metal teeth on it. It's it's. I wouldn't highly recommend it because the little metal teeth can kind of dig into the pencils a little. But um, I notice it can be sensitive for, you know, certain pencils don't like it. It's a little mechanical sharpener. These did beautifully in that sharpener. I didn't have a single issue with breakage. I didn't have a single issue. That was another thing, too. When I, uh, For all the pencils that I used, I used at least half the pencils in the set. And I didn't have a single one break on me. I didn't have a single one snap or do anything like that where I had trouble getting a sharp point on them. They were all real smooth and able to get... Now, that's been really unusual lately. Um, generally, any pencil sets I get, you get that bum pencil that, that never wants to get sharp. But these all sharpened very nicely. And the sharp points were really kind of needed because um there's a lot of small spaces in these pictures and um that was one thing that was bugging me a little bit at first because I was like I don't know how I'm going to be able to do you know more than one pencil in these really tiny areas but with the sharp points on the pencils I was able to make like the two color blends work really well and that was another reason why I didn't add a third because we just really didn't, I, I didn't really feel like I had the room for it. And I didn't have the patience level <laughs> to go into those smaller spaces. <laughs> so um, with the magenta and the, the red, I did notice a little, just a tiny amount of dust being brought up. And um, again, this was the point I was, I was adding a little more pressure and I really was only doing one or two layers at most. So I think that was one of the reasons I was starting to get a little bit more. But like I said, it was like compared to other pencils, like 10% of what the other pencils have generated. So I was, I was really surprised at that. Now, I will note I purchased these from Castle Art. Castle Arts. That might be the the reason why they arrived in such good condition. Um, love, love, as we know, I love buying stuff from Amazon, but sometimes um, some of the some of the stuff they ship, they don't. It doesn't arrive shipped the best, and so ultimately. I have found that sometimes pencils from Amazon can be a bit of a mixed bag. Um, for instance, I got my Derwent Pastel pencils from um, uh, Amazon and those are soft anyway because they're pastel. And um, I did have some issues with some, I've had some issues with some breakage on a number of the pencils. And so the uh, replacements I've ordered have all been for Blick. Um, but these I... They were priced at 60 US and I had found a um, coupon on Instagram for 50% off. So I actually got them for $30 with free shipping. And let me tell you, these might be one of the best pencil deals after seeing how much I like them. Um, these might be some of the best, one of the best pencil deals I've come across. Um, I think honestly, had I known what they were like, you know, obviously you can't buy them open 
dock at least i don't think you can right now i have to look it's one of the downsides is um i don't believe you can buy these open stock but let me go and look before i say something because i don't want to misspeak Yeah, it looks like currently it's just the sets. So that's the one downside to these pencils is they're not open stock. So, um, but I may have had to sharpen them two times at most while doing this picture. So, I mean, it took a while for the lead to wear down. I don't feel like they, um, because of the makeup of the pencils, I feel like they kept their point a little longer than like a fully, you know, most mostly wax based pencil. So, um, I'm not worried. I'm going to use these up very quickly. So that I would say is probably the one downside, but unfortunately it's not like you could buy a couple open stock and try them right but had i known how i like them now i mean i i feel like they're even worth the 60 to be quite honest but if you can get them on sale for less than that by all means go for it because um that was a fantastic deal for some pencils that i i had been curious about because uh, a couple of friends had used them and I liked you know what their pictures looked like but that I was really just pleasantly surprised by so and, and these aren't you know like I said these aren't super soft they they lay down softer but they're not super soft pencils but yet they didn't like they're not so hard that they cause a lot of pro pain problems with my wrist and my arms um so they're they're kind of a a perfect combo if you will they don't dust up and smear as much as like some really soft wax based pencils do but they're not so hard that they make coloring uncomfortable for me like a set of crayolas do um i love the crayola pencils they have some beautiful colors i just can't get the color i want out of them without using a lot of pressure and then it just totally tears up my back and my hand so and my elbow and everything on my right side hi scamper come admire mommy's picture don't be jealous of the garden kitty it's not a real kitty no worries she's been doing pretty well by the way um she's uh been we've been taking her weaning her off the steroid i haven't weighed her actually in a number of days but her activity level's been good her appetite's been good and i just honestly haven't wanted to obsess over her weight <laughs> she's she's been doing really well so i'm just assuming we're fine and um what um she does go in for a checkup on friday the second so We'll see how things go then, but um, I did notice her appetite waned a few days when I didn't give her her amitriptyline. So this might be, it's either a behavioral issue or she had maybe some pancreatitis or something that took a while to heal. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I don't know what she is doing. What are you looking for, dear? She has been able to use being sick to her advantage, though. She's been able to con me out of bits of salmon and bits of ham here and there, um, just because I feel bad for her. I don't give her a lot. I mean, she rarely gets people food. <laughs> You're like, well, Michelle, that would probably be the issue if that were the case. But no, she rarely gets people food, but um, she has been being spoiled a little bit because of that. And Leroy's doing well, too. Um, for those of you who saw the Instagram post about him and heard me talking about he had to get some teeth cut out and a dental. Um, turns out he they didn't have to cut them out. They were in good enough shape that he could keep them. And being only five, he needs to keep all the teeth he can get. So they put some type of um, scale polish thing on his teeth that are supposed to help prevent plaque and 
and I guess help him keep his teeth longer. So um, something relatively new that the vets there are, are using and they really like it and recommended it. And I trust my vets. So um, he was real quiet when he came back. Like, like maybe he thought, oh man, I've been really bad. And so they punished me by dragging me to the vets. So and now I got to be real quiet and good for a few days. Uh, that didn't take long. He's, he's mostly back. He's a little quieter. But, you know, the thing is, he could have had a lot of pain with his teeth and the uh, stomitis or whatever it's called. I can never pronounce it right. I, I get them. You ever have those words you get a mental block on and just every time you get ready to say it, you're going to say it the wrong way. That's me and that, that word. Um, I think it's stomitis or something, something like that. But um, anyway, we're just about done with the peppers here. <laughs> Got a little, got a little distracted. I end up keeping the um, trellis uh, stuff that it's on white, just to keep a little bit of a white balance in the picture. I've been trying to do that a little bit more lately. Oh, I did put in footage of the bird. Very cool. So I wasn't sure what color I was going to color the bird, so I just googled bird, and the first image was this real pretty uh, bird with like a. a red orange and yellow type belly i don't know what type of bird it is it's not from around here and so i was like okay we're gonna go with that one easy peasy the black um as you can see as i layered on it's not a deep dark black now it might be if i added five or six layers on it but um a serviceable enough black pencil just for simple shading like this now if I was going to use it for blacking out I wouldn't black out a whole background with colored pencil but um, sometimes when I'm painting a background black I will use a black colored pencil around the edges of the picture so I don't have to paint all the way up to the edges a um, little tip there for y'all uh, quite a few of us do that um, so I'm sure I'm not the only one but um, if I do that, I'll use a black Prismacolor pencil because that's a good solid black colored pencil. But this one's pretty serviceable. I mean, you can see here it's, I would say it's more like a C9 on the, <laughs> on the cool gray scale. But um, still, I mean, and I don't mind that because you can still see a little bit of the, the features of the bird like the eye and the beak and stuff um that's why i don't necessarily mind it being like not entirely black so but like i said even with one layer of color as you can see here you get a really nice blend with these Uh, and I've always heard with oil-based colored pencils, you tend to have to do more layers and layers to get that kind of buildup. It's not necessarily a blend as much as it is a buildup of color and layers, but I, I feel like I can get a pretty good blend this way. And I felt like I could do that with a polychromo, so I don't know. Like I said, maybe I'm just probably not using them the way they should be used. <laughs> I'm not abusing the pencils or anything, but I mean, like... That this is how I use them and they work for me. So hopefully nobody will come take them away from me. But yeah, it turns out to be a pretty little bird here. So um, one of the issues I ran into with this picture as I was coloring it was like, I've got the peppers and the tomatoes and the strawberries. There's so much red in this picture. And so the strawberries end up being more pink than red. And... Um, yeah so anyway um all right so i've yapped for like 23 minutes let me let's just go ahead and i'll show you the finished picture um because like i said this really was just kind of a glance and a peek at how these do and you can see me starting to fill the basically i just spent the rest of the time filling them in i did not have a color palette picked out for this i just looked at my swatch card and just rolled with it as I went along. So let's hop to the final picture and my final thoughts on it. And um, we'll have a nice little, fairly short for me video here. So here we go. And here is the finished picture. 
Let me zoom in a little here. I love how this turned out. And I, hang on, there we go. I love how this turned out. Um, once I got started, I thought I would work on this like a little bit at a time, but I guess because of the size of the picture, um, I was actually able to work on it on and off all day today, which is Sunday, and um, used, you know, quite a few of the pencils. I really like the pencils. They, um, <clears throat> They don't feel like I have to layer them over and over again, but um, they do feel a little different than um, regular like wax-based pencils. So um, like they don't feel as when you're looking at them on the paper. I don't know. They don't seem quite as shiny. Um, I haven't used the Polychromos enough to say if they play more like Polychromos than Prisma. But I do know there at the end, I was getting to the point where I was just able to put one layer of pencil down and I was just using two pencil blends. Now, you know, some of the stuff you can't see the blends too much, like in the lettuce and the strawberries and stuff, um, because I didn't use too big a difference in the pencil colors and like the tomatoes. But in other places, like the, the pepper leaves and the peppers, you can really see it um, in some of the flowers. And um, I used just a touch of gel pen on these little flowers next to the sweet kitty. And um, yeah, I really do like these pencils. Um, they, like I said, I was able to get a nice amount of color with just one or two layers um, without putting a lot of pressure on my hands. This kind of picture felt doable over two days worth of coloring for me, which, um, I mean, I don't know what my back and shoulder will do tomorrow. We shall see. But, um, so yeah, I am definitely going to be using these, I think, a lot in my Rita Berman books. If you'd like me to do, I, I've been thinking I haven't really done like an official color lawn type picture probably in a real long time. If that's something y'all would be interested in, let me know in the comments. Um, for this one, what I'll do is um, put as many of the pencil combinations as I can think of in the description on what I used, just in case um, you're curious as to what I used for each one. But um, yeah, I really like these pencils. I ended up with the discount I got with them. They are more than worth. <laughs> I got them at a real good price for their price point. And I like the regular Castle Art pencils a lot too, but, but these surprised me. I had waited a long time to get them because I didn't really know if I would like them and um, they have pleasantly surprised me. So um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of first look at them. And um, yeah, uh, the next thing I'll probably do is try them in a Joanna Baster book, probably Magical Jungle, because that's where I try a lot of my pencils in, but it could be any of her books. And uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, thanks guys for watching, and bye for now.